If there is one Asian film market that has captured the attention of the rest of the world in the last decade, it's definitely South Korea. 2022 proved to be another stellar year for South Korean movies, with a massive selection of hits and blockbusters released, especially towards the middle and end of the year. So here are 2022's top 10 highest grossing Korean movies at the Korean box office. This list only includes Korean movies released in Korean cinemas, and unfortunately, the data we have only provides a US dollar total. But something unique to this list is the revenue share percentage, and as you'll see with the top film, it was a monster. But it did star the Man Mountain, so that makes sense. Let's get started with number 10. Sneaking in at number 10, scoring a modest 2.53% of the total Korean box office for 2022, is this science fiction action film about an extraordinary story that unfolds as the gates of time open up between the late Goryeo period of 1380s to the modern times of 2012 to 2022. A great cast in this one include Yoon Byung-hee from I Saw the Devil, Kim Il-sung from Train to Busan, and Lee Honey from Extreme Job, and directed by Dong Hoon Choi, who is responsible for the first Tatsa film, and how's this for variety, was one of the directors of the PlayStation 3 game Little Big Planet. Critically, the movie seems to have been quite well received, in context to the type of movie it is. It's a long film, typical for Korea, clocking in at almost two and a half hours, and luckily it was picked up for distribution by WellGo USA, so it should be relatively easy to find if this film takes your fancy. Considering the hysteria around this film, you probably would have expected this to be higher on the list than ninth position. But it is what it is, and the Korean viewing public have spoken. Directed by Park Chang-woo, his first full-length movie in six years, you'd be familiar with his previous work with the Vengeance trilogy, which includes Old Boy, one of the three extreme stories, and the critically acclaimed thriller The Handmaiden. This almost two and a half hour long movie is about a detective investigating the mysterious death of a man in the mountains who meets his wife and starts to suspect there could be foul play. Starring Park Ha-il from The Host and Chinese actress Tang Wei from Lust Caution, this movie has already won over 30 awards at various film festivals around the world. Most of those festivals have been from the US. Believe it or not, we haven't seen this one. The hysteria around this film just seems a little too much, so we're going to wait for all the hype to die down before we dive into this one. But if you've seen it, please feel free to share your gushing praise in the comments section below. A comedy movie, and under two hours as well. This is 6 slash 45, the eighth top movie of 2022, with a very modest 15.7 million US dollars at the box office and a respectable 3.13% of 2022's total revenue. Now we can't be the only ones who've noticed that South Korea seems to love making movies involving their brothers, cousins, uh, friends from up north. This movie is about two soldiers, one from each side of the Koreas who fight, maybe not literally, more with words and slapstick, over a winning lottery ticket that blows into the north from the south, testing the boundaries of the old finders keepers rule. Although I'm not too sure how the soldier from the north was going to cash the ticket. Maybe we should watch the film to find out. A fun cast in this film sounds like it makes it a bit of a riot to watch, including Go Kyung Pyo from Decision to Leave, Yi Kyung Lee from Hitman Agent Jun, and Yang Moon Suk from the number one movie on this list, which we're not telling about yet as we don't want to spoil the surprise. Yet another film clocking in at just under two and a half hours, it's becoming a bit of a theme with this list, is this disaster action thriller with more famous faces than you can poke a stick at. Okay, okay, two main famous faces, but they're big ones. Song Kang Ho, who was in The Host and some small indie film called Parasite, you may have heard of it and Lee Byung-hun, who has been in so many films that it's almost an insult to list them. But I'll list one anyway, I saw the devil. Or you can be that person who says, he was in Squid Game. Yeah, well it was also in Ashfall, remember that disaster? Speaking of disasters, that's what we have here with Emergency Declaration. A modest 16.6 .6 million US dollars, scoring 3.3% of the 2022 total revenue, and surprisingly a strong 6.9 user rating on IMDb for this action thriller about a terror incident that occurs mid-flight. 
not exactly original. They should have added some snakes or something like that to the plot, but it's still exciting enough for most viewers, even if it was just a tad too long. Oh, and by the way, we know Parasite's not a small indie film. No need to leave the hate comments. Confession, we haven't seen The Witch Part 1 from 2018, and also another confession, we haven't seen this one either. Park Hun Jung returns to the writer and director chair for this sequel to the well-received 2018 film. Now you're asking yourself, why does his name sound familiar? I'll give you a clue. He was the director of the 2013 Korean version of the Hong Kong film Infernal Affairs. Yeah, that little film that a lot of us think is one of the best Korean movies ever made. A strong female-led cast pushed this film to a total box office of 23 million US dollars and a nice 4.5% of the total revenue for the year. Leading the way is the singularly named Cynthia, a rookie actress that took Korean gossip rags by surprise when it was discovered she beat out 1,408 other contenders and had only ever featured in a skincare commercial. Reprising their roles from the first movie is Min Soo Jo as Dr. Baek and Kim Da Mi as Ku Jung Yoon, who was discovered by the director for the previous movie. So what's this movie about? Well, from the title, we're guessing witches. But the synopsis says something about a girl waking up in an underground laboratory and meets someone who is protecting her from some type of gang. Our guess is a trafficking gang, but we've been known to be wrong on more than one occasion. One thing we are sure about is that the gang has no idea about the powers this girl has. We admit we'd like to see it. But guess what? This one also clocks in at just under two and a half hours. Just when we were getting used to these two and a half hour long movies, along comes The Night Owl in fifth position, whose run time stops just before the two hour mark. Finally, earning a very nice 25.2 million US dollars and scoring just over 5% of the lucrative total revenue share is this mystery film that only released six weeks before the end of the year, making its place on this list all the more impressive. We're not too sure about the accuracy of the plot though, as it's about a blind acupuncturist who witnesses the death of the crown prince. Specifically, we're not too sure about this particular part, that he can see normally at night. Surely that means he isn't blind, right? sounds more like he has selective vision, which I think is something all of us males can attest to at times, right? The cast of this one features Ryu jung Yol from A Taxi Driver, and he won a few awards for his role in that movie too, and Hai Jin Yu, who was also in A Taxi Driver, and the 2021 sci-fi film Space Sweepers. Now that's a movie that we actually have seen. The website that provided this list to us featured the name of this movie all in capitals, like it was shouting it at us. But thankfully, every other website just capitalizes the H. But we have to say, with a director like Lee Jung Jae, yes, he was the main guy from Squid Game, but seriously, his filmography is incredible, including the awesome Along With The Gods movies, New World, Deliver Us From Evil, The Thieves. We're rambling, aren't we? But you get the point. He's a terrific actor, and he makes his directorial debut with this film. 35 and a half million US dollars is nothing to sneeze at. Neither is capturing 7% of the total revenue share for this action mystery spy film set in the 1980s, and also featuring Nam Gil Kim from Emergency Declaration and one of our favorite silly Korean comedy horror films, The Odd Family. Here's some trivia about this film for you. Apparently, Lee Jung Jae re-edited the film after its canned screening to provide additional details about 1980s South Korean politics for international viewers. Since this movie received a very wide international release both theatrically and on the festival circuit. Also, this movie is only just over two hours long, so phew on that. If you've got an assignment to do, in this case alongside the Americans and North Koreans again, it might as well be confidential, right? Agent Im and Agent Kang are back for more. Five years after the first movie that saw those two work together to investigate a North Korean crime syndicate. I mean, really, does North Korea have those? They reunite and team up with an American called Jack. And let's be honest, he was either going to be called Jack or John to investigate yet another criminal syndicate. This time they're described as brutal and secret, which is how you'd want your criminal syndicate to be described as. Alongside them is Yuna, who was also in the first film and starred in the hilarious rock climbing come white gas disaster film Exit from 2019. Well, we thought it was hilarious anyway. 
Something tells us that if you like the first film, you're going to like the second one too. The audience certainly did, with a rock solid 56.5 million US dollars at the box office and a massive 11.2 of the total revenue. This was a well received monster of a film. Now here's a movie that just kind of crept around, but honestly, with a box office total of 58.7 million US dollars and a nice 11.7% of the total revenue share, this 2 hour and 10 minute film, yes, 2 hours and 10 minutes is the new 2 hours and 20 minutes, is actually a kind of sequel to the 2014 film The Admiral, while it's more like a follow up, which is technically a sequel, but whatever. Set in the 1500s, or 1592 to be specific, this movie tells the tale of Admiral Yi Sun Sin and his deadly fleet who fought against the Japanese invasion of Hansan Island. An entertaining movie and a history lesson all in one. Nice. Taking over from Choi Old Boy Min Sik as the role of Yi Sun Sin from the first movie is Park Hae Il from the number 9 movie Decision to Leave. Sounds like he made a few good decisions in 2022 by scoring two entries on this list. And on top of that, two very highly acclaimed entries as both Decision to Leave and Hansan seem to be appearing on quite a few Best of Asian and Best of Korean 2022 movie lists going around. But when you need a winner, you call this guy, Ma Dong Seok, better known to some people as Don Lee, but we don't talk to people who call him by that name. The Man Mountain, the Man Beast, the generally all-round awesome Ma Dong Seok returns as Ma Sok Do, the biggest, baddest, and sometimes friendliest detective in all of Seoul, no, all of Korea, in this follow-up, yes, there's that word again, to the 2017 film, The Outlaws, also known as The Outlaws 2, The Roundup, which is what we reviewed it as when it hit Netflix, this movie raked in a massive total of 104.6 million US dollars and commanded a massive 20% of the total revenue share. One in five tickets sold in Korean cinemas in 2022 was for this film. That is a remarkable number. And you know what? This movie's worth it. It's a lot of crazy fun where we get to follow Ma and his boss as they travel to Vietnam to extradite a fugitive, only to find themselves caught up in another crime when the guy surrenders far too easily for their liking. Honestly, this is a very fun film and well worth its position as the top Korean movie in the box office for 2022. Which of these movies have you seen and what did you think of them? Which ones do you want to see and why? Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please press the like button and consider subscribing to support our channel. We'll see you next time.